When a user is authenticated, we want to persist their session across the navigation as well. We want to welcome them as well as give them a different navigation. So the first thing that will guide us and what to do next is that we want the user session, we want the user's information to be persisted across pages so that regardless of whether we go to a different page or refresh the page, we want it to stay there. But how do we persist global data? How do we persist our data in Next without using some state management system like Redux? For holding on to our session, we can make use of our custom document page. So within pages, we'll create an underscore document file. One thing to note about this underscore document page is that it's only executed on the server side. So since it's executed on the server side, we can read its signed cookie and as a result get and persist all of the information that we pass down within it. So in other words, when we get the information from our cookie with the help of our custom document page, we'll put it in a place where we can read from it again. So as we know in creating this document, we'll need to import document head main and next script from next slash document. We'll export default class my document extends document and we'll return some HTML tags a head but we don't need to put anything in it some body tags main and next script and like all other classes all other components that we can create this my document class can have its own get initial props method. So we'll say static get initial props and we'll add the context parameter because in wiring this up manually we're going to need the context in order to get the document the document classes props that we're extending. So we'll call get initial props on our document. So we'll say const props equals await so this will be an async function document.getInitialProps and pass through the entire context object and we'll make sure at the end to return the props and we can spread it into the props object and again this is just a required step step otherwise we're going to get an error that's going to tell us warning expected server HTML to contain a matching div and div, something like that. But for the part that's relevant to us, we want to get our token. We want to read our token. And of course, we'll read the token from the request that's coming in. So we can say, get server side token. A, this will be a new function that we'll create from context.request. And this as well will be asynchronous and we'll create the functionality for get server side token in our auth file. So we'll export const get server side token. It receives the request and from the request once again we can destructure signed cookies and set that equal to an object by default. We'll grab signed cookies from request. If there are no signed cookies we're just going to return an empty object as well as if so else if there are no there's no signed cookies dot token if there's no token property on the signed cookies object and in that case we'll return an empty object as well otherwise if we do have a token we're going to return on the user object signed cookies dot token so again, looking at our server where we sign our cookie, it'll contain all of this user data, name, email, and type. And again, get server side token that's running on the backend on our server. I know it might seem odd since we're mixing it with this client side code. So this will return an object with our user data on it from the token. So we can call the value that comes back from this await get server side token. We can call that user data. 
and we can also spread that into the props that we're returning from get initial props. So what can we do once we're putting this user information on our props for this custom document? Well, in our render, we can grab that. We can grab the user property from this.props, and we'll give it a default value of an empty object. And as we mentioned, we're creating all this to have some global data for our users session to save their user data. And we want to put all of their user data in a place that any part of our app can access. So with the help of a script, some script tags, we can put this in the window. We can put this user data in the window. So below main, we can create our own script. We can write a set of script tags or just one. And we can use the dangerously set inner HTML attribute to put the user data on the script. And we'll add our double underscore HTML property. And we'll pass this user object from props to a new function called get user script. And we'll also create this new function in our auth file. So underneath get server side token, we'll export get user script. It accepts the user or the user data. And first we need to declare what the property on the window will be that we want the parts of our app to access. So we'll create a custom variable for this. We'll call this window user script variable. And I'm going to set it to the string double double underscore user, and then two more underscores. It just needs to be a unique recognizable property that we're property name that we're putting on the window. We don't want it to conflict with any other properties on the window object. And we're setting it to a variable so we can easily reuse it. And from this function, we're going to return. And using this template literal syntax, we're going to interpolate window user script variable. And so on this property, we're going to set the user data, but we're going to stringify it with json.stringify first. We'll just pass in the user. And additionally, on top of setting our user data in the get initial props of our custom document, we're also going to want to put the user data on the window when our user logs in. So instead of just console logging the data, we will, if we have access to the window, to the window object, meaning we're making this request in the client, we're going to put the data that we get back from the request on the window as well. So we'll check to make sure that we're in the browser by saying if type of window is not equal to undefined, which is what the window will be if for some reason we're on the server, we'll say window and then using our window user script variable property set it to the data that we're getting from our login request, or if that's not available for some reason, set that to an empty object. So let's save everything. And since we created this custom document, we'll likely need to restart our dev script. And once we're recompiled, looks like we're getting an error its server side tokens not defined. We forgot to bring them in to the page. That was my mistake. So we'll import get server side token as well as get user script from our lib folder from the auth file. Okay. Now if we head back and refresh, let's first take a look at whether we've logged in or not yet. So we do have a token. So since we're authenticated, we should have been able to get our token from the request that came in and should be put on our window. So if we had to console and say window dot underscore underscore user, we should see all of our token or cookie information there. 
So this is the first step in persisting our user's session. And if the setup that we did, all the work that we did in our custom document didn't seem to make much sense, hang on until the next video. It'll all come together there.